Thank you, Madam President. Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Madam President, Dr. Blanco Marquiso, and distinguished delegates. Australia is pleased to be here in Panama for the first in-person session of the COP since 2018. We would like to acknowledge Panama's commitment to hosting this important summit so that we can all come together to renew our collective efforts to address the harms associated with tobacco use. Madam President, Australia has a proud and hard-fought history of tobacco control. We have seen a long-term decline in smoking prevalence over many years, and we are pleased that our tobacco control measures have achieved smoking rates at unprecedented lows. However, there is more to be done to reduce our national daily smoking rates to the ambitious targets of 10% or less by 2025 and 5% or less by 2030. Our latest national tobacco strategy also includes a target to reduce daily smoking prevalence among First Nations Australians to 27% or less by 2030, recognising that smoking rates among First Nations people remain unacceptably high. Our strategy also recognises the relationship between tobacco control and Australia's commitment to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals. Many of the SDGs have a direct or indirect relation to tobacco control and further reducing tobacco use will play a major role in global efforts to achieve the SDG target to reduce premature deaths from non-communicable diseases by, two, by one third by 2030. NCDs represent the single largest cause of premature mortality in the Pacific Islands and remain a key focus of Australia's continuing development investments in the health of our region. Madam President, the theme of Together Promoting Healthier Lives for COP10 resonates with Australia and our current focus on tobacco reform. We are pleased to share that since the introduction of Australia's historic plain packaging laws more than 10 years ago, we are now progressing our next wave of tobacco control reforms. New and substantial legislation passed the Australian Parliament on 7 December 2023. Alongside this, we are working to develop new public health campaigns, provide further support for cessation and harm prevention, and progress new tobacco excise measures. All of our activities strongly align with the FCTC and recognise that a comprehensive, evidence-based approach to tobacco control comprising supply, demand and genuine harm reduction strategies is the most effective. Support and advice from other member parties has been extremely beneficial in developing Australia's measures and we want to acknowledge the value in international partnerships and the collaboration that the FCTC and the COP facilitates. The increasing prevalence and marketing of, marketing of electronic cigarettes poses a threat to our tobacco control efforts, in particular for young people. To address this risk, the Australian Government has committed to introducing stronger controls to ensure they are only available under medical supervision. Madam President, Australia notes that the implementation of the FCTC anticipated through uptake of the global strategy continues. We must accelerate efforts to rebuild momentum on tobacco control and ensure our hard-won gains on this important public health matter are not lost. We remain committed to these efforts domestically as well as supporting our neighbours to address NCD prevention and control measures, including the impacts of tobacco. In closing, Australia wishes to reaffirm our commitment to the FCTC, recognising this important forum. I would like to acknowledge the significant contribution of our non-government colleagues Australia. nationally and internationally, uh, the continuous efforts of the Convention Secretariat for their coordination and ongoing support of parties that makes this possible. I assure you of Australia's support in this crucial endeavour. Thank you. Thank you, Australia.